Hello again, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Brian Holcomb, and uh, today I'm going to be edge jointing a piece of uh, walnut that's going to turn into um, a case. So this is going to be a wall hanging cabinet. Uh, the piece of walnut I have here is about 15 inches wide, 80 inches long, and uh, it needs to be overall about 18 and a half inches wide. So I'm going to have to join up one piece along the edge. Before I chalk this up in the vise, it's nice to take a look at the, uh, the grain on the face and just make sure it's rising so that when I plane along this direction towards the camera, it'll plane nicely without any, uh, any tear out. Now I'll check, just as a reference, approximately where we are to perpendicular on the sides here. But this is not a very sure, you know, this is not a perfect reference because the board could have wind or cupping in it and that will throw off my gauge. And so it looks fairly, fairly close to square, that's good. But the, uh, what really matters is the edge is without wind. So we're looking to make a completely flat facet on the side of this board that is approximately square to the edge or to the face. And not much wind. I've got my triplane. I'm going to take a few passes with that. Before doing so, I can always check to see how far off I am from from flat with this big level. It's got a little bit of a hollow in the center of it, that's fine with me. Now I'm taking fairly heavy cuts. I'm using my thumb, sorry not my thumb, I'm using my fingers as a guide, as a fence. camber to this board. So I want to walk around the uh, walk along the edge and keep the blade basically centered. Basically, there's a lot of end grain terminating on this edge, so we're not going to get a continuously flat, perfect shaving. What we're going to get instead is this sort of crumbly, this stuff. It's not a big deal, because the edge itself is very smooth. And now I'm going to check again with my winding sticks. See what we look like. A little bit of wind. And so since I have a little bit of wind, what I'll do is start the start the triplane sort of bias in this direction on this side and then end on the opposite bias. Using my fingers again as a fence. And then one pass alone is probably enough to take out the amount of wind I had. Yep. It sure looks pretty square. Yep. And so the last step is to take out what the camber's done to this edge is made it slightly hollow in the center, and so <clears throat> what we want to do is make one flat pass. And 
Make sure it's got a totally flat surface here. It's looking pretty good. I think if we check with our level, we're going to find it's probably cupped, sorry, not cupped, probably concave in the center, slightly. Talking about maybe a 64th of an inch or less. And that's what we got. So the next step here is to join up the board that's going to this now I've got the board that's going to join up with this I want to make sure it's running in the same direction as this big board so I'm going to take a few test passes see how it cuts after inspecting the side grain, which I did already, to ensure that it's going the same direction. And it appears to be going the right direction. So it's going to be this edge which joins up with the edge that we previously joined. Now I don't need to take this out of the vise. Instead of setting it on the stock, what I'm going to do is clamp these two boards together and the one in the vise will keep this one from moving. Basically square. Let's see how much wind is showing on this edge. A fair amount of wind. This edge is high. This edge is high, and the opposing edge, this one right here, also high. So I'll take those same staggered cuts. Based on the shaving, I would say this board is probably also hollow in the center. Not too much. Not too much. We're probably pretty close to this point. I don't get too caught up with this board because I'm going to match the two of them. I've taken all the wind out of it. And so now I'm going to take a few passes with the metal joiner. Got to oil it first.
basically a full pass. Let's see how it fits. Just judging by feel, I would say it's fitting pretty good. boards don't have, they aren't crossing like this, they're sitting flat, so the only issue we have is that it looks like this one has, it's a little proud right along here. Right about there. Seems to be the top of a Take that down a little bit, see how it fits. Since I want a minimal glue line, we don't want the clamps to have to do a whole lot of work. Looking pretty good here. You can see that this board has a curve to it, where this one seems to have the opposing curve. And so what I'll do is when I glue these up, I'll just bend these together a little bit and let one equal out the other a little bit. So that when I go to cut everything up and uh, <clears throat> into segments for the case sides and the case top. I'll have a little bit less work to do in flattening these. I think we're all set. Next step is going to be gluing. Next step in this process is to begin gluing. Now when I glue two panels together, I like to make sure that I spread glue on both sides of the joint completely. So you want to get everything in order before you start gluing. So once you start gluing, time becomes a factor. I've got my clamps behind me. I've got my glue spreader. Glue bottles ready to go here and off to the races.
And if you're in the middle of a big loop, inevitably somebody will knock on the door or call you. And so it's always good to make yourself as unavailable as possible whenever gluing. If you only have a few minutes. So what I'm looking for is nice, even spread of glue across the entire joint. You don't want any pockets without glue in them, hoping that they will fill with glue when you clamp. They probably won't. Okay, both surfaces are covered with glue, as you can see. And next step is the clamp. Put these one on top of the other, hopefully without making a big mess. I like to glue up the ends first, or clamp up the ends first. Now that I've got the whole piece clamped up, I like to wipe off the uh, glue runs at this point so that I don't have to plane them off later. I 
And you probably wonder why I go about this in this approach of gluing up two panels which have not been face jointed. Which if most of you guys are from machine tools, you find that to be kind of a curious thing. However, with hand tools, since my uh, planing efforts on a big panel are going to be going cross grain, uh, the wider it is to start with, the better off I'll be because I might as well do all the work in one stroke as opposed to doing the work just flattening the two boards individually and then flattening them again as a whole. <clears throat> Basically doubling the amount of strokes I have to take. Also, I tend to find that a full panel gives you a fuller picture rather than trying to join up two panels closer to uh, finished size and then finding out that you have some issue or another that you wish you had uh, left the full thickness until the end. There are some advantages, of course, to doing the pieces individually and then joining them together. However, I find those advantages to be outweighed <clears throat> by this approach. I also like to glue them up full length so that when I make my cross cuts, I don't have to make multiple cross cuts and then <clears throat> take off a lot of material in between those two, uh, those adjoining pieces, so that when you look at the grain as it runs over the case, it'll seem continuous. And to show an example of that, here is the desk that I just finished up. You see that this was a full panel that was then cut, cross cut, and joined up along these edges. And what we see is the grain runs over the top, down along here, and then over this edge. There's one more point that will separate studio made furniture from furniture made in a shop where they're just pumping them out. And you can see here the effect on the finished piece where the grain runs over the top of the case along and down the side. And that's just one more thing that separates well-made studio furniture from anything else.